This is task 2a part 1 where we're going to look at calculating the APR. Now the first thing that we need to do is get this table into our spreadsheet and we're told that the APR table where we can look at the APR rates is in this file here called aprtable.csv. So we'll open that file up and then all we've got to do is copy those create a new worksheet here and paste them in and we're told to call that worksheet APR table. So we will do that and we'll go back to our APR calculator and you'll notice that one of the things that it asks us to do is look up the age. At the moment we've only got date of birth so we need to find a formula that is going to work out the date of uh, the actual age and we can use a date diff for that so I'm typing date diff and the difference that we want to work out is the difference between the date of birth which we named date of birth and today's date so we put today and then two brackets and the difference we want to work out is in years so that's a y for years if I close the brackets that will now work out that if I change this date, for example, to 1987, that changes to 27. We'll change that then to white, uh, so it can't be. I'm just going to do mine as grey, so we can at least still see it. And the other thing that we need to work out is the employment status. Now, the employment status can be good or risky, but at the moment we've got full-time, part-time, self-employed, casual and unemployed. So we're going to use a formula here to work out what it's actually going to be. And we need to list all the different options. Now, when we scroll down, it will tell us what the different risks are. So if we look at the question, it will tell you what the risks are. So it says employment status can be any of these. And then it says full-time, part-time and self-employed are considered to be good, whereas casual and unemployed are considered to be risky. So in here, I'm going to create a new table. I'm going to call it employment. And I'm going to have the different options, full-time, part-time, self-employed, casual, and unemployed. We then want the bottom two to be risky and the top three to be good. Let's make that so we can see it bigger there we go now what we're going to do is we're going to name this table I'm not naming the bit that says employment just a bit that's got the data in and we're going to call this employment table so when we want to look up a value in there we can find it and what we're going to do is we're going to look up the employment status and we want to find out from column two whether it's good or risky so this is going to be a V lookup let me just change that to black so we'll be able to see it equals the lookup because we want to look something up. Now if I click on FX and we type in the lookup here and click on go, we can actually use this box here which makes it a little bit easier to complete the the lookup function. So what are, what's the value that we're going to look up? The value that we're looking up is going to be the employment status. So we're going to look up the employment status let's just get rid of these bits that we don't need at the front and we go and put that back to normal the table that we're going to look it up from is going to be our APR table not our APR table our employment table in the APR table worksheet so it was the employment table that's where we're going to look them up if you remember if we have a look at this it was column two that we want to return so I'll change that to column two and here we've got to say whether or not we want to find an exact value. If we want to find an exact value, then we put in false at the end, and that will now find an exact value. So if we click on OK, that's come up with good. If we change this now to casual, there you go, it's changed it to risky, self-employed, good, and back to full-time is still good. We'll make that grey again so that it can't be seen. Now we're going to need to refer to these cells, so again we'll name them. 
I'm going to call this one employment risk. And that will tell me whether it's a good risk or a risky risk. And we'll name this one age. So we can refer to both of them. Okay, so that's the end of just the basic formulas that you need to put in and getting the APR table in. The next uh, tutorial will talk you through the APR table and just making it a bit clearer to understand.